I'm going to show how I make the um, the notion pouches. Um, I have some. This is Sirdar Snuggly, and this is fifty percent cotton and fifty percent acrylic. I'll use anything with cotton if it's got cut cotton in hundred percent cotton or fifty percent cotton or because I think it's better for the um the pouches. So I'm going to take this label off, and I'm using four point five millimetre hook. These are the Zing crochet hooks are very nice to work with these so I'm going to find the end of this I'm going to make a chain of 39 stitches go one two three four Five. Don't pull them tight when you do it. You want them quite loose. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. That's thirty-nine. That chain. That's thirty-nine. And you want it to measure about nine inches. Well, my chain measures 10 inches, but when you do the first row, it pulls it in tighter, so it'll be around about eight and a half to nine inches. So, so we're going to do one row of double crochet across this chain. Um, that's if you're in that's a UK terms, it will be single crochet if you're in the United States or... So we're going to miss the first chain and go into the second chain. And just double crochet or single crochet, depending which country you're in, into every stitch. And I crochet different to most people, so anyone watching just crochet the way you normally do it. This is the way I do it. I can't do it the, the other way, holding the wool in this hand. It doesn't come natural to me and it doesn't work for me. And I will meet you when I get to the end of that row. Yeah, just a few more stitches to do to the end of this row. So that now is that first row. We measure it now and you'll see it'll be a little bit tighter than it was before. It now measures about nine and a half inches. It'll probably come in a little bit more as we start doing the pattern. That was the first row, just to start the pattern off there. Um, and that's not the actual row, but the pattern it's just one row, that is all it is. So we are at the end of that row and we're going to do one chain and turn. And then we're going to miss the first, that is the first stitch there. We're going to miss that stitch and go into the second stitch. And we're going to do two crochet, double crochet into that stitch. That's one, two, 
and then we're going to miss that stitch there and go into that one so we're missing a stitch and going into the next stitch and doing two double crochet into that stitch or single crochet if you're in the United States and other countries so that's two into that one miss the next one go into the next one and that is all we're doing on that row is two double crochet miss one two double crochet miss one miss that stitch go into the next one Pull some wool out. Miss that stitch into the next one. And that is what we're going to do all the way across that row. So I will be back when I get to the end of the row. Here we are at our last few stitches, so I'm going to miss that stitch and go into that one there. So one double crochet, two double crochet. You're going to miss that stitch and this is the last stitch on the... We go into the last stitch. And get into only one to two go into the last stitch and we're just going to do one double crochet into that stitch so we start off at the beginning of the um the row after the chain you do you miss one stitch and you put two two double crochet into the first stitch but at the end the last stitch only has one double crochet in and then you do a chain one chain and you turn and you start and do exactly the same thing again miss that first stitch there go into the second one two double crochet into that stitch miss the next one And two double crochet into the next stitch. And that is all it is. Two double crochet, miss one stitch. Two double crochet into one stitch. And miss the next stitch. Two double crochet again. And that is that one row is the same row every row is the same after the chain you start with two double crochet into the second stitch miss a stitch two double crochet and you do that all the way along to the end of the row when you come to the last stitch you just do one double crochet into the last stitch and you're going to do that until that piece measures about seven and a half inches because when we're making the bag the work keep on going up this way but the bag will be folded this way so that you'll have the lines the line of the pattern running up but i will come back when i do a few more rows and show you more So this is how the the piece is looking now and I think I have done each one of these they're like a stripe going across each one of them there's two four six eight ten so that's ten rows I've actually done there and the one row that I did the um just a, a single row of double crochet across the bottom and when you're doing this, it's a good idea every so many rows to count your stitches across the top. Um, you start with the, when you start, this is your 
where your, your chain that you turn start that is your first stitch and count from there so that's one two three four five six seven like that six thirty seven thirty eight which is what you're actually working on but it's a good idea to keep count every so many rows because one one i was making when you're doing two double crochet into one stitch you might accidentally only do one and you end up with a losing a stitch which happened to me and i did it quite a few times i lost about four stitches and that made when you folded it in half like that instead of the ends being like that one end was down like that so i had to pull it all out down the way i had made that mistake we had lost the first stitch so what i do after about every every four or five rows i count to make sure that i have the 38 stitches counting the, the stitch from your chain so that is how it's looking and like i said that's how it's going to be folded to make the little bag so you're working going this way until it measures about seven and a half inches and i will be back when i get that far Well, the crochet bag has now reached seven and a half inches, which was what I want. And I've cut off the um, the blue and added in the white. And when you put the zip on, you want it so that the little, the little white or the silver bit at the end and the, the pull part of the zip here it's just over the edge because you're going to do two more rows all the way around with this and that will bring it a bit further out to about here so that will just cover those things and when you when you put the bag in the ends these ends will be fitted inside so the last row i crocheted the very last row I did was one row of just a single double crochet all the way across, the same as what I did at the start. So I've added the, the white here. I'll show sure what I did on the last stitch, I'll take that out. You just take your last, your very last stitch, pick the white, and you don't do that stitch with the um, with the blue. You do it with the white. That's to start off the white. So you now have two two ends, and what I'm going to do with those two ends, I'm just going to tie them. Just one tie like that to secure them. And that last stitch we did, we're now going to do three double crochet into that stitch. We're going to do one. Two three no that one's not quite I've caught a little bit of the little bit extra thread two three so now we're going to pick up the stitches along the side and we're going to pick up the stitch here, the stitch there, the stitch there, the stitch there and I'll count them as I go along but as you're going along we're going to put these two strands here just crochet over them. So I'm going to the first space here And 
put them over the just put those over the hook like that and crochet over them like that into the next space those over the hook again crochet over them to the next one and just keep doing that until those ends are worked in so it's only double crochet that's all we're doing over that row you will count how many you've done when I get to the end And now we'll meet you at the end of that row. So I've come to the end of the row and I've left the last stitch because we're going to do three into that stitch. But we picked up, when you count the stitches, you count the last one of the three corner stitches, your first stitch for along here. So I'll take that out easier to use this. <laughs> so we've count, we've crocheted, double crocheted, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. So we're going to do three in this corner, and the first stitch will be the thirty stitches that um we've done that side. And when you come to do the other side down here, you will want to pick up the same number there, thirty there. But we're at this corner here now, so I'm going to go into the corner and we'll have this end to work in as well. That end there, I've only I've worked so far along, I'm probably just going to cut those off but leave a little edge because any that's left hanging you won't see because it'll be on the inside of the bag. So I'm going to do three into this corner. One. two three and then we are going to do along <coughs> the cast on the chain edge so you're going to pick up 38 stitches all the way across here that's 38 including the last of the the three stitches you're doing on the corner so that that last stitch in the corner is your first stitch so you'll be picking up that's two, three, I'm forgetting to work that in, I'll have to go back. <laughs> so that's one, two, four five and then just carry on till you get to the other corner and you'll be picking three up on that corner so you will actually do 37 up to that corner and the first stitch of the three will be your 38 stitches into that corner so i've now crocheted 37 stitches including the last stitch of the three in the corner so the 38th one's going to be the first of the three in this corner so i say well let's put the corner stitch oops Drop my hook. So I'm going to do three into this corner. That's one. Two. 
two, three. And now we we'll have to do, has to be 30 up this side. But we're actually going to crochet 28 because 29 is the last stitch of the corner one and the first stitch of this corner. So that is the 30 stitches up to that corner and now we're going to do 38 all together including that first stitch there and that last stitch here. So we're actually going to pick up 36 in the centre. Now I'll meet you at the end of that row. So that is 37 stitches and now I'm going to join to the, the top of this. If I can get through that single stitch. Join that to that stitch in that corner. Make one chain. And then just crochet all the way around that hole. Just crochet around the whole thing again one more time. Don't do any extra at the corners, just do whatever stitches you see all the way around and that will be your second row of double crochet and I will meet you when I get that far Now we come to the last couple of stitches. I'm going to do one crochet, double crochet into that stitch. And then I'm going to do a slip stitch into this stitch over the top of the three corner ones. I can get it into it. <laughs> I'm having a bit difficulty getting into that stitch. <laughs> there. That's it. <clears throat> and then I'm going to slip that stitch through and just cut it off. I'm going to leave a long bit of white wool because I stitch the, um, the zips in by hand. So I use the same wool. So that is those little bits there. I'm just going to cut off. Leave a little bit there. It doesn't matter whether you leave any little bits hanging inside because it's hidden by the um, the cloth bag that we put inside. So that will be the bag folded and the zip will go across the top and as you can see the, 
the little bits each edge of the zip or just on each corner there and when we put the zip in we just took those bits in the side and I, do, I sew down the side of the, um, the bag here but we'll have to put a lining inside first but I usually sew the zip sew the zip on before I put the lining in So I have some small pieces of material here, I'll see if I've got anything big enough for this one. That's not wide enough. That isn't... That bit is no good either because that bit isn't deep enough because you need enough for the hem across the bottom and to turn this down on the inside. I don't think there's enough to do that. No, there's not. So that piece is no good either for this thing. Uh, this one here, this might be enough. Well, this one is. I'll be able to just fold this one and I won't have that seam to do because it's folded. So you have to measure. That's to do it on the inside because I can draw the... Um, what I'm going to do on it. So we'll have to leave a small amount at the bottom here for the bottom part of the seam. So I'm going to draw the line along here that I'll be sewing. And cut it from here. Oh, it hasn't drawn a line there. Pen. Do it again. That's it. And then I'll draw it from here. Put that bit off the end. That's where that line is going to be. And we need a bit to turn over. For the bag. So we'll just draw a line across here. And there will be a line up the, the side here for the inside of the bag. And these scissors. I'm going to cut this, yeah, I'll 
that's it and cut across this line here So that will be the the lining for that bag and I have another one which I am not sure whether this one will fit or not I'll have to get the yeah, it might do I have another one to do this one just just a fraction bigger probably about one row difference so I have one is for a lady called Julie and one is other one is just to sell. So this one's blue. They both look the same on here, but they're not actually. This one is a, a blue and that one is a turquoise. So this one needs a little bit off here. And a little bit for the turn over on the top. There, so that's two linings I'll have now. So I have to cut that on that line to cut it off and cut that bit across there. I should have drew that line on the inside on the wrong side. <laughs> I have to do that again. One for this side, <coughs> for the side. Because I will be stitching it on the wrong side. So that's two bags I have to go inside. I put that to go with. That's to go with that one. Zip. I have another zip for the other one. And this one is to go with this one. And now all I have to do is put the zips in, sew the bags, and sew the bags inside. And I will do more when I get round to that. And now for the next part of the um, the bag, um, 
I have pinned the zip and have sewn so far along. And what I have done with this wool is, as it's quite thick for, for sewing, I've split it more or less in half because there's three strands here. I'll blow that up a little bit so you can see better. Yeah, I've split it, there's three strands. And I've left the other strand, there's four strands in this bit, so it's easier to sew with. So I've left a long enough strand for to sew this in. I'm going to sew it in on the other side because this is half of that thing. I didn't want to just cut it off here because it would start coming out. So I've left it long enough to stitch that little bit in. And as you can see, I've just been doing a back stitch. That's how I've been sewing the zip in. So I've pinned it. And when you're sewing it, you go into the back, the stitch behind, because you're doing a back stitch. But try to keep your, your stitching as close to the edge, to the zip, in a straight line as possible. Otherwise, you'll get, when you come to shut the zip, you'll have little wavy bumps on it. So I am going into the back of the stitch like that, coming out in the next stitch like that. Now just curling up the, the thread there. And that's how I'm sewing the the zip in. Anyone that wants to try it on a sewing machine can, but I can never get it to go in a proper straight line and it's rather awkward to sew this way I'm standing because I need to have it resting down when I'm when I'm sewing it. So you go into that stitch there and come out in the next stitch in front of where the, the wool already is. And that's how, how I sew the zip in. And when I've done this side, I will use the other half of the wool that I cut off to sew it in on the other side. I will pin that down like that. And try to get the same distance. Pin it like that and then try to get the same distance from the um, the teeth part of the zip. But I will show you when I start doing that. So I'm going to sew up to the end. I'm just going to sew up to the, the little bit where the teeth end here. That's as far as I'm going to sew to. So that when I come to do the... The sides you just fold these end pieces down like that. And it's the same with this side here. I just started sewing from where the metal end is on the um the zip. That was where I started from. I left these free to, to fold down like that. So that is that side pinned, that side sewn and that side pinned and I open it and I will start sewing from this end of the zip here where the zip finishes. And I've just put a knot in the um, the end of the wool. Take that pin out. Now we'll go over into this 
side here. Bring it through on the wrong side, just one or two stitches before I actually start sewing to make sure it doesn't come out. And then go back through the zip. Yeah, so I've done one or two stitches on the wrong side there, and then that's just to keep the Make sure that that knot doesn't come out and the stitching doesn't come out. So I'm going to It's very hard to sew standing up like this because I'm standing up at my table where my phone is and I'm usually doing this on my knee. So I have to make sure I get the thing in the right place. And that is all I'm doing on this side as well, doing a back stitch going into one stitch, coming out in another one, into one stitch, coming out in another one. Into one stitch, coming out into another one. And that is how I'll be stitching that, as you can see the back stitch on the other, um, the other side. But like I'm saying, anybody that wants to to put their zip in on a sewing machine, they can quite willing to do that. But I do prefer to do it by hand. I can get the um, the zip in more even then. So that's the zip stitched in. as you can see it's quite straight there's no bumps that's why you have to keep exactly try to keep the same distance from the teeth line it exactly the same all the way along otherwise sometimes you get if i can bend the zip you get little bumps like that on the zip it goes in and out so you must try to keep the same distance from the teeth to where you're stitching the zip on. Mine's not exactly perfect there, but it has kept the uh, the zip straight. So now I have to do the bag for the inside of it, and then I will show you what to do with that. So I have now put the bag inside the. The lining inside the bag I've pinned it and now I am stitching I've took this one side here I've took the little what's left of the end of the zip in underneath and that will be hidden when I do the sides but I'm now sewing this it's very hard to do this when I'm standing up looking over my phone because I can't see what I'm doing very well but I have to go behind the the stitch where we stitched it into the zip and come it out a little bit further And my eyesight's not that good because I'm trying to see what I'm doing over the phone. <laughs> so you're s attaching the, the bag, the lining of the bag, to the stitching. And you can see the stitching when I pull the zip. The, the material back there
of that sweet. And that is how you do the sew the lining, how I sew the lining in. I'm sure there's others could find other ways to do it, but this is the way I prefer to do it. So I'm going to stitch that all the way there and all the way around. When I've done that, I'll come back and show you how I close up the sides. So that's the bag stitched as neat as I could. You can't hide the stitches as, um, you know, the way it's done. And I am now going to do the sides and I'm using some of the wool that I crocheted the, um, the white part round. And I've just pushed the bag inside out of the way, push it in so it's out the way. And so we are going, going from one, the stitch, the two stitches that's closest together. You have two, two sides to the stitch. It's like a V, V there. I'm going into the one part and coming out. I'm going to have to make sure I'm in the right place. <laughs> right. That part of the V and that part of the V. And just stitch it. Keep the two pieces together like that. The next part. one part of the V there through to the part on the other side. Make sure you only lift up the one part of the stitch. It's very hard for me to do this looking down over my phone. I wish I had somebody who could video this for me while I'm doing it on my knee. Because <laughs> I have to look at what I'm doing and sometimes my hand moves away from the, from the camera. <laughs> Now that's it done when you pull it apart like that. That's how it looks. And if you need to pull it tight, you just need to pull it a little bit to tighten it up. And then I do a couple of Stitches, wrap the wool around the needle. Like that, and then take the 
the wool up the needle up through a few stitches just pull it out like that and then all you have to do is cut that off and that's how you fasten the sides so I will do the other side and show you the the finished thing that is the bag completed I made I put the little hole on the, the zip there. I put three strands of wool through. So we had six pieces, made a little plait, and then just knotted it and cut the ends off. And that's a handy little thing for opening the bag with and closing it. There, as you can see, the, the lining's in. The stitching as neat as I could do it so it doesn't, not large stitches, you know, that's, you can't hide those stitches, it doesn't matter how hard you try. And the sides, both sealed up. I think I have a little knot there that's sticking out, I'll have to push that back through. That was where I joined the, um, the yarn to go over the um, the edges down the side and I never noticed that I must have brought it out on the wrong side I'll just push it through so that's that one done I have another one to do but that one is for Julie so I have another one that will be for sale So if you like that, would like to see more, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll catch you all another time. So bye for now.